In this video, you're going to set up your AWS account by creating an IAM user and configuring the AWS CLI. When you create an AWS account, that's your root account. It has complete control over everything. IAM users are separate accounts for everyday work with specific permissions you assign to them. You're going to create this IAM user, generate an access key for it, and configure the AWS CLI on your machine to use that access key to authenticate as that user and run AWS commands from your terminal. This takes a few minutes to set up and it's required before you can build anything on AWS. Let's get started. But before we do, make sure to hit that subscribe button so that you can stay updated on the latest cloud, DevOps, and even AI content. Let's go. This video is your first step to cloud computing with AWS because we're going to set you up with an AWS account, a user that can be used to manage everyday tasks in that account, and developer tools in order to automate tasks that we're going to be performing in the future because this tutorial is just one video that's going to be part of a much longer cloud computing series. And this is your first step. So attached to this video specifically is a resource that I want you to go to. I left you a link in the video description. So once you're here, please click on start learning. It may prompt you to sign up to my platform. Okay. And then click on prerequisites. Okay. Because the first step is actually creating an AWS account and walking you through it is trivial. So I left you some instructions that you can use to get set up on that very quickly. So pause the video and feel free to create an AWS account right now. I hope that process was fairly intuitive. At this point, you've created an AWS account and it should have signed you in to whatever username you set for your root account. And now this is really important. You never want to use your root account for everyday tasks on AWS for two reasons. Reason number one, if the credentials for this account are ever compromised, an attacker has unrestricted access to manage all of your AWS services, change payment and billing, or even delete your account, which is really, really dangerous. Number two, it violates the principle of least privilege because say you have a team of people and there is one member of your team, a user that is only responsible for managing EC2 instances. But because they have unrestricted access to all services, they might have accidentally deleted an S3 bucket. Uh, obviously an exaggerated example, but it proves the point that you never want to give people more permissions than what they need to perform whatever task they've been assigned. And that's where identity access management comes into play. Okay, so what I want you to do is search for IAM. Uh, and what this service does is it allows you to manage access to AWS resources for certain users. Click on that. And on the left sidebar, let me zoom in a little bit for you. You should see users. Click on that. And we're going to create a new user. The first user we're going to create, I'm going to call him admin user. And we're going to give him the role of being an administrator. An administrator can modify, delete, edit, read virtually all AWS resources and services. So what would separate an admin user from a root account? Well, an admin user can't close the account and cannot change root account settings. So it adds an extra layer of safety and say in the future, you want to modify this user to have lesser permissions, you can do that through the identity access management service. So the first user we're going to create is the following. Click next. You can add user to a group or you can give him a policy directly. So say you have five people on your team and you want all of them to be admins. Instead of creating five users, and giving each of them administrator access separately, what you could do is create a group, call it admins, give that group the policy of administrator access, and then add each admin user to that group. So one admin user could be Philip, one admin user could be Tom, so on and so forth. We're only going to create that one user, admin user, and we're going to give him the policy directly for the purposes of this tutorial. Okay? And we're going to give him or her administrator access and click next. All right. 
and that's pretty much it. Create your new, your new user. So now this user can literally do uh, editing, deletion, uh, they can read all AWS services and resources. But there's something else we need to do. Click on your user. We need to log in as them. Uh, and so they're going to need to have access to this cloud console, just like our root user does. So go on security credentials and then enable console access. I'm going to use a custom password, something I can easily remember. Uh, let me just type it in right now. And enable console access. Do make sure to remember that password. You can download a CSV file that contains all of this information in case you forget it. All right, that's that. I'm going to close this. Perfect. So now you should see a link that all IAM users can use to sign in in order to manage services and resources in this AWS account. It usually has the following format, the account ID that is tied to your AWS account, followed by um, whatever that's needed to sign in to the AWS console for that account. So click on that. Here we see the account ID. And if you sign in with your root email here, you're going to get an error because that's not an IAM user. You need to sign in with the IAM user you just created. Admin user. Um, So that completes step number one. Instead of using a root account to log into the cloud console, uh, we logged in with a user that has more restrictions on them, but can still manage our AWS resources and services. Uh, mind you, we can reduce these permissions in the future. Instead of attaching the administrative access policy to this user, we can do something that's a bit more restrictive. But for now, I'm satisfied with that. Step number two is allow this user the ability to sign in to AWS through the command line so that we don't always have to manage services through the UI. We can do everything from our terminal, which tends to be a lot faster once you get the hang of it. Okay. In order to do that, they need an access key that they can use to authenticate from the CLI. How do we do that? Go click on your username, click on security credentials. Now, mind you, the AWS UI tends to change from one year to another. So if instead of you know security credentials, it says manage security credentials or something to that extent, you know, just use your intuition. Uh, the concept is still the same. And what I want you to do is look for create access key right over here. And we're going to create an access key that can be used by the user whoever that may be, whether that's Philip, Tom, or admin user, uh, to authenticate through the command line. So click on Next. Oh, understand the above. Um, let's just create the access key. Uh, and now what I want to do is download the access key as well as the secret access key through a CSV file. All right. And now we can use this access key to authenticate as our IAM user. In order to do that, there is another prerequisite that I want you to follow. So uh, go on the same link that I had in your video description that took you to this resource, OK? And click on setting up AWS CLI for Mac or for Windows. You need to set up the AWS CLI first so that we can run AWS commands on our terminal. And once you do that, then we can use the CLI to authenticate to our AWS account using the access key we just downloaded. So pause the video and make sure to do that for whatever operating system you're using. Okay, having completed this exercise, write AWS dash dash version. And if you get a version uh, that reassures us that we can now write AWS commands in order to authenticate our IAM user and allow them to deploy uh, services and resources to AWS. Now, before we configure our CLI, what I want you to do is run the command AWS configure get the default region where we're going to do all of that. If you get a blank region, that's normal because you haven't 
uh, configured a region yet. How do you know what region to choose? What I want you to do is look up AWS regions and availability zones, and that should give you a list of AWS regions. Each region contains many data centers where you can physically deploy your applications and services uh, at different geographies. Now, what you want to do is Now, if you're not sure which region applies to you, a common convention is to just use US East 1, mainly because it's AWS's oldest and more feature complete region, and that's usually a good place to start. For this example, I'm going to use US East 1. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go ahead and say AWS configure. First, I'm going to open up the CSV file from earlier. You never want to show these to anybody, okay? Your access key and your secret access key. I'm going to delete these after this tutorial is done, uh, but make sure you keep these somewhere safe. The access key for our admin user is the following. The secret key is the following, and they can use that to authenticate. We want our admin user to deploy resources to the region US East 1. So let's go ahead and set that up. You're welcome to use US East 1 as well. That's a good default choice. Default output format, we'll leave that as none. And that is all. And perfect, by running AWS configure, now we're authenticated as the admin user. Let me clear the output and test something out. Now I'm gonna write AWS S3 LS. So this is a command uh, where the admin user is asking to list all of the S3 buckets. You should get an empty response because you just signed up for AWS. I had an S3 bucket that was previously deployed via Elastic Beanstalk, which is why I see this output. But whether you see an empty response or an actual output, that means you're set up correctly because you didn't get an error. The admin user tried to list the number of S3 buckets and got a successful response, whether that's empty, whether there's a result, and you're all done. I hope you enjoyed this video. Make sure to hit that subscribe button if you want to continue this cloud series. I'm going to release a lot more videos on it, and I will see you in the next one.